We are, the sermon title tonight is, Are You Failing or Prevailing? Or Failed or Prevailed? In other words, are you just going through the motions or are you, are you having victory? And, uh, you know, I, I'll, I talk to uh, several people and, and I say, are you winning more than what? Losing. Are, are, you, are, are you winning more than losing? Turn your Bibles with me in the Old Testament to 2 Chronicles, please. 2 Chronicles chapter 13. And uh, uh, I love this story. This is one of my favorite stories in the Bible. And um, you say, why? <laughs> You'll find out. Amen. Uh, 2 Chronicles chapter 13, you can remain seated and just follow along as I read this. If you're there, say amen. 2 Chronicles 13, 13. But Jeroboam caused an embushment uh, uh, to come about, uh, about behind them so that they were before Judah and the embushment was behind them. And when Judah looked back, behold, the battle was before and behind, and they cried unto the Lord, and unto the priests sounded the trumpets, and the priests sounded the, the trumpets. I love how they cried unto the Lord. The battle's raging, and guess what? They cried unto the Lord. Guess what? The battle's raging, folks. Amen. In verse 15, it says, but, And the men of Judah gave a shout as the men of Judah shouted. And as the men of Judah, shout, Judah shouted, it came to pass that God smote Jeroboam and all Israel before uh, uh, Hebijah and uh, Judah. And the children of Israel fled before Judah, and God delivered them into their, land, into their hand. And Abjah and his people slew them with a great slaughter. So there fell down slain of Israel, 500,000 chosen men. That's all big battle, amen. 500,000 uh, 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 chosen men. That's a lot. Of, that's a half a million in one battle. You think, you think the war, World War II was bad? One battle, and they were God's chosen men. Now, now, folks, listen to me. We better be careful. If, if you're called of God to do anything, you better be careful. I don't care if you're called to God to usher, audio, pastor, youth pastor, children's worker, uh, are, you, uh, are you worker, are you director, whatever the case may be, you better, because you might be one of that 500,000 if you don't pull up your britches. I, I don't want to get Ladies, can I get an amen from you ladies tonight? Can I get an amen, sister? Amen, thank you. Because the men are going, Ugh. All right. And verse, uh, where am I here? Okay, verse 18. Thus the children of Israel brought under, uh, brought under at that time, and the children of Judah prevailed because they relied upon the Lord God of their fathers. You will prevail if you rely on God. Are you, have you failed or are you, have you prevailed? Just as many people today, the children of Israel wandered far away from God. As a nation, they had fallen to idolatry, heathen practicing practices towards and worshiping towards false gods. They had rebelled against God and cast out the priests of the Lord and bowed the, the knee to a golden calves, just as many Christians have done today. You say, well, I haven't. Have you? You know, if you're, if you're an addict, you've bowed your, just like that one gentleman, bowed his knee towards the idol of oxycodon. And maybe you're, that's not your addiction. Maybe your addiction is your friends or whatever the case may be, uh, marijuana or, or, or lying or cheating or stealing or whatever the case may be. But if God is against it, so must you be. Amen. God got a little upset. And, and by the way, when God gets upset, something happens. Something big happened here. Half a million men died. Just like that. 
Can you imagine that? Can you imagine the stink of a half a million dead carcasses? People walk and go, what is that? Oh, that's because those men over there, they just didn't, they, they walked away from God. I don't know about you, back in Ananias and Sapphira when they died and a great fear came all that heard, I think great fear came about all those that walked by, or walked anywhere near there and that smelled. I don't know if you've ever smelled a dead body. It don't smell pretty. It's not, it's not, it's not eau, de, eau, de, eau de toilette. It's eau de stink. It's pretty bad. Half a million, God says, hey, man, you've upset me. Dead. Be not deceived, God is not mocked, for whatsoever a man soweth, that shall he also reap. You mock God, God may just get a little upset at you. And see, the, these men led by King Abijah, the southern kingdom of Judah, had gone to war against Jeroboam and the northern kingdom of Israel. And there was a war between these two men. See, Jeroboam was an evil king. And led his people astray. Abijah was not a good king either, but he followed the footsteps. But but and he followed the footsteps of his evil father Rehoboam, the son of Solomon. But Abijah knew what it was to be on God's side. See, the battle was fierce, and the victory was one-sided. Half a million men got slaughtered. Why? Because God said, they're not on my side. If God is against it, you better be. Oh, well, eh, no. I like that. It's my nature. You know, it is your nature to sin. We have a sin nature. But the Bible says, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. We ought not to sin. Oh, but it's so much fun. And some people think it's so much fun. But you know what? The wages of sin is death. The word rely is used in two places in the Bible. It's used in our text, but it's also used a, a few chapters uh, later in, in chapter 16, verse 7 and 8, and it says, And at, the time, at that time, Hanani, Hanani uh, the, seer, uh, the seer, came to Asa, the king of Judah, and said unto him, Because thou hast relied on the king of Syria, and, that's, uh, and, that, and not relied on the Lord thy God, therefore the host of the kings of Syria escaped out of thine hand. Were it not the Ethiopians, Lubins, uh, a, a huge host with, uh, with very many chariots and horsemen, yet, because thou did not, uh, didst not, uh, did rely on the Lord, uh, and he delivered them into thine hand. The word rely means to completely trust in or to lean upon. You know, if, if you, um, my dad, when he walks, he has a cane and, and he relies on that cane to keep him up. Uh, he, he has two ski poles that he, he walks with and, and he leans on them and he relies on them. But you know what? Jesus better be something you rely on. Amen? Hello? Jesus better be something you rely on. Because if you don't, you're relying on something that will not get you through. If you're relying on this church, you're, you're relying on the wrong thing because we're humans. If you're relying on those books to get you through, uh, the, uh, you better rely on Jesus giving you the wisdom to do those books and to get grasp of what's in those books to put it in your heart and to put it in your life to get you through. But it, it best be on Jesus. There's a, there's, a, there's a celebration recovery and all these AAs and whatever you want to call them, NAs and, 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 and GAs and whatever, anonymous. You know what? There ain't nothing anonymous about, about our you. It's all about God and what God can do through you. Let me ask you a question. Are you failing or are you prevailing? See, the secret to winning any battle, whether it's an addiction, a stubborn habit, or whatever, 
is putting complete trust and relying completely and solely in God. That's it. You say, that's pretty simple. Yep. You know, to get saved, it's God's simple plan of salvation. You don't have to jump through hoops, spit nickels, stand on your head, and, and sing kumbaya. And know the alphabet in 45 languages. You just need to accept. The secret to any victory is relying in God. Elisha A. Hoffman wrote, what, I, what have I to dread? What have I to fear leaning on the everlasting arms? Uh, I have blessed peace with my Lord so near, leaning on the everlasting arms. Leaning, leaning, safe and secure from all alarms. Leaning, leaning, leaning on the everlasting arms. That means to rely. What does it mean to rely on the Lord? It means to lean on Him. You know, I had somebody say to me, well, Jesus is not my crutch. <laughs> that's why your life is so messed up. I looked at him right to his face. I said, that's why your life is so messed up. I said, man, you got addictions. You got stubborn habits. You probably ain't saved. Well, I got saved. And, you know, it's okay. And it's okay to be saved. And God bless him. He'll go to heaven. But, man, I'll tell you something. God is going to say, yeah, you didn't do what I wanted you to do. You missed, you missed the purpose of me saving you. See, our, our, us getting saved is not solely, the purpose of it, it's not, getting saved is not solely so we go to heaven. It's, it, it's so we can be like him. And what was his job? He came to seek and to save. That's what was lost. I don't want to be a religious fanatic. I don't want to be a religious fanatic either. I want to be a, I want to be a Jesus fanatic. I want to be a relationalist. In other words, it ain't about religion. It's about relationship. And you ever, you ever wonder uh, why I was saying to my wife, I said, man, especially last week, I was saying, Catholic people are so angry. You ever notice that? They're angry. They are, man, they're like putting two, two betta fish in the same I don't know if you've ever done that. <laughs> um, you probably shouldn't have. <laughs> but, but, man, they, they fight. And they, why? Because they don't have Jesus. The fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, all the other things. It's not like, hmm. My church is better than your church. And you know what? Oh, can I, can I go on a rabbit trail a little bit? Not a little rabbit trail. Can I, can I kind of let the... Let the can I, this is what I would preach in front of a whole bunch of pastors. When pastors get up and say, my church is better, don't go talk to that pastor. Don't talk to this pastor. Don't talk to that pastor. Because, well, I have something in problem. I, you know, I honestly have no problems with any pastor. Not one. Not one. None. Zero. You know why? They're my brothers in Christ, and they're doing the same thing I'm doing. Now, if they're preaching the wrong gospel, i got an issue with that, but if they're preaching the right gospel, they're preaching out of the right book, and they're preaching most of the stuff that I believe, uh, I'll be okay with it. Now, maybe some people lay, oh, well, you don't have to be in church every time. That's okay. But I'm not going to pay. And, and we wonder why it's petty little fights. And you know what? We stop relying on God when we do that. God says, I want no part of it. I want no part of it. And that's okay. I think that's why, that's why Reformers Anonymous, there, there doesn't need to be two in a city. Now, a city like Toronto, yeah, okay, we, you got like three million people there. Yeah, okay. But Brantford, look, we got under 100,000. We don't need two, three, four RU programs in the city. Simcoe does not need three RU programs. Simcoe needs one. Hey, Kitchener needs one. Hey, London needs one. Hamilton needs one. Uh, uh, Cambridge could use one. Uh, uh, where else? Uh, Barry new, needs one, could use one. They all need them. But you know what? It's we need to rely on God when God says do it. And oftentimes we don't rely on God. We'll say we'll do it if it is feasible, financially feasible. 
you know, we started this RU program, and somebody gave us six hundred dollars because he saw the he saw the uh, um, uh, the article in the newspaper that was written about us. Sarah, how much money did we have set aside for our RU program when we started? When God said we're going to start it, we had not a dime. It cost us about eight hundred bucks to start the RU program, and we didn't purchase everything. If you were going to purchase everything, it cost about two thousand dollars. We didn't purchase everything. We didn't purchase all the banners and the sign. We didn't purchase all that. One day we will. God said do it. We just leaned on him and said, okay, God, you told us to do it. We'll take care. You'll take care of it. To rely on him means to have victories over the battles you face from day to day. When those trigger points in the RU program, in the Strongholds book, when you get a little head, have you gotten to the trigger, po trigger points, Stronghold triggers yet? I know, Fred, Jim, you, you have. Uh, it talks about the trigger points. What, what are your triggers? What triggers you to, to, to do that sin? What triggers you to lose that battle? What triggers you to, to go to that addiction? To rely on God will help you overcome those. It will help you to overcome the Strongholds. That of, of the sins in your life. See, the battles are still real and they're still fierce and Christians are losing the battle. You know what would really hurt me? If one of you are you, are you uh, students say, you know what? It's not worth it anymore. I'm going to go back to my addiction. You know why? It's because you lost the battle. You lost the battle. You succumb to your stronghold. You stopped relying on God. See, relying on the uh, Lord brings many things to our mind, and, and, and it should bring many things to your mind. See, number one, I'm going to give you three points tonight, and yes, I'm going to be a little longer. Four points tonight. I'm going to be a little longer, but please bear with me. I'm, not, I'm going to stay to my notes. I'm not going to go off my notes. Number one, to rely on the Lord implies a closeness to him. You can't rely on somebody you're not close to. How close is your relationship to God right now? Could you lean on him if you, if you needed to? Is he near? Or do you have to run to find him? If you don't spend time with him every day, he ain't close. Amen? Amen. You know, oftentimes we, we put our RU books aside and we don't, we don't for months and months on end. And I didn't do that. I, I'll be honest with you. When I finished my strong or my overcomer book, I, I, I kind of was a little lax when I got into the strongholds. I did a couple and I kind of, uh, for the summer. And man, I'll tell you something. I felt the light. I felt the, not the addictions and my food addiction, but I felt a little distant from God. I was still in my Bible. I was still studying. I was still meditating on the Word of God. But I felt a little distance. Why? Because that Strongholds book and those over the, 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 all these books that we, you, you get in the RU program, they help you get closer to the Lord. One of my favorite stories in the Bible is, is of the Last Supper. Where Simon was lying put his head on the breast of Jesus and said, just wanted to be close to him. Just wanted to be close to Jesus. You know, these little kids, and your, your kids, uh, Brother Tim and Sister Marcella, they come up to me. I love spending time with them. You know, uh, uh, which one of your children gave me the hug? Maddie. Maddie. I'll, big, big cheeks. Little chipmunk cheeks. She's storing nuts for the winter. She gives me a big hug, and I give her a hug back, and she looks up and smiles. I love that. She wants a pastor that loves her, but she has a God that loves her. 
And at that young age and, and growing up and growing up and growing up and, and you know, if the Lord should tarry and Tim and Mar God doesn't move Tim and Marcella on and one day when, oh, I don't know when she's old enough to date, whenever you say she's date, 45, 50, never date and, uh, and court and, and, and when, she's, when she's 82, she gets married and, uh, no, she, uh, but when she gets married and comes up that aisle, I can say, you know what, I remember, Maddie, when you were a little kid and your big cheeks and, you know, and you come up and gave me a hug. I love that. You know why? Because that's the closeness. That's the closest. Uh, when Tim calls, and, 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 and sometimes I can't get it, it I'm like, man, I want to I wanna talk to him. Why? Because he's my brother. La on Friday when we went and, and uh, we, we went out for, for dinner and uh, I spent time with Freddie. I love that. But you know what? You better want to love spend time with the Lord. Do you ever feel his presence? I was the other day I was sitting down and 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 I just was spending time with the Lord and I just felt that he was sitting right next to me. I was talking to your 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 uncle, the Godfather Rudy, and he says, Man, I love the way you pray. It's like as if you're talking to God. I said, Who else am I gonna be talking to? You know, it's not the it's like, dear Lord, man. But he told his disciples that he was going to be put to death soon. And all Simon Peter wanted to be close to him. That's all he wanted. But you know what? When they was put to death, he told them three times, be mocked, beaten, scourged, whipped. And in three days he'll rise again. They should have been there. They should have been there. Wouldn't you love to have been there, Tim? Come on, kids, let's go. Hurry up. <laughs> let's go. He's about to come out. They missed it. That, that's probably how Tim would sound, too. Amen. <laughs> Freddie, we, Miller, we go, Pastor said we, he's, he's going to come out. Pastor, we got to go. We got to go meet Freddie. No, <laughs> it'd be the other way around. And uh, but we, there should have been a crowd there. And they failed to see it. The greatest miracle ever. The greatest miracle. I hope we get to see that in heaven. Don't you? Don't you, Tim? Hope we get to see Jesus that. <laughs> him roll the stone away. Roll away, roll away, roll. And by the way, when the stone rolled away, so did our burdens. And they missed it. See, Simon Peter, just a few days, a few, a few, a few maybe hours, well, a few days earlier, uh, uh, was 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 right there. Couldn't get couldn't get any closer to Jesus. His head was on his chest. Then, a few days later, he was nowhere to be found. At the end of John thirteen, he told another story that he would deny him. I think he failed. See, when he was close to God, he was okay. But when he walked away from God, when he left the presence of Jesus Christ, he, f he failed. Do you know when you get into your car tonight and go home, you can still have the presence of Jesus Christ? The Bible says where two or three are gathered in my name, there am I in the midst. What are you talking about? What are you talking about? The great deals you can get at Costco tomorrow? No, you got to talk about Jesus. And my dear friends, when we get close to God, we'll feel his presence. But when we're away from God, that's when we start failing. Let me ask you a question. Have you ever de denied Christ? You know, when we... Don't do something for God that's in a way of saying, uh, are you saved? Uh, yeah, yeah. That's one of the reasons why I like wearing my Lighthouse Baptist Church golf shirts. I think this summer I'm going to get some, some golf shirts for the men. And for the, uh, for, for the men. And, and we're going to go out and do some street preaching and stuff. It identifies me who, who, I, who I belong to.
Oh, you're a Baptist? Yeah. Do you know Jesus? Yeah. Got a problem with that? Do you? Because if they don't know Jesus, they're going to have a problem. You don't walk with God, you're going to have a problem. <laughs> Every sin it has its origin in your heart. When you, when you decide, I don't want to walk with God, you make that heart decision. And you say, ah, it's not worth it today. See, John was close to Jesus. But many today are not close to Jesus. See, Amos chapter 3, verse 3 says, Can two walk together except they be agreed? This is the reason why most Christians do not rely on God. Because they don't agree with God. They're not close enough to lean on Him because they disagree with Him too much. That's why many Christians leave a church because they disagree with the pastor. They disagree with the, the way of the church, the direction of the church. You know, I'll tell you something, uh, and I'll be saying this next, next Sunday night, and our, my State of the Union address will be next Sunday night. I'm going to tell you the direction of the church, where it's going, and it's going towards Jesus. You either get on, the, get on the truck or get left behind. We're going to Jesus. Amen? We got some men in our church that actually want to serve God, want to do something for God. We got some ladies in our church that actually want to do something for God. Get on board or you're going to miss it. You say, that's pretty blunt. Uh-huh. I don't have time to fool around. By the way, I believe Jesus is going to come back at the start of the tribulation period. And it could ha you look at the book of Revelation, you look at what's on the news, he could come back tomorrow. And I want him, I want him to find me so doing. Could you imagine you, Jesus comes back and you have a beer in your hand? <laughs> I hope not. Or you're doing your addiction, or you're somewhere you ought not to be, or you're doing something you're not supposed to be doing? Well, hello. See, again, number one, to, to rely, on a, a lower, the, rely on the Lord implies a closeness. How close are you to God? Number two, uh, to rely on the Lord implies also implies a weakness. Self-reliant people find no need to lean on, on Jesus Christ. One of their favorite phrases is, I don't need anybody else. I can do it myself. I don't need God. There's this elderly lady at one of the nursing homes that we were, we were at, and she says, I, I don't know why you rely on God for everything. I can get it myself. <laughs> Man, I'll tell you something. This morning, I relied on God. I said, God, uh, I'd like to see Tim and Marcella and the kids today, mostly the kids and Marcella, but, you know. <laughs> Amen. But I'd like to see, and they really want to be in church. Tim was like, man, I, I'm coming. I'm coming. I'm in. And, and we were talking, at the start, the, the, the weather was bad. Halfway through our conversation, it was, it was like, well, it's getting a little bit. It wasn't this way. And then 10 minutes after, probably within five minutes after we got off the phone, <laughs> the sun started shining. Man, I'll tell you something. It was good. It's good to trust in God. Amen? 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 Oh, but, I, but I, I, I'm going to trust in the government. You know the government will let you down. Hey, I'm going to trust in my mom and dad. You know your mom and dad will let you down. But for us to trust in God implies that we're weak, and that's a good thing. That's a good weakness. The Apostle Paul, one of my favorite people in the Bible, recognized his own weakness and relied upon God. In 2 Corinthians chapter 12, verse 7 to 10, it says, And lest I should be exalted above measure through the abundance of the revelations, there was a given unto me a thorn in the flesh. The messenger of Satan buffeted me. Lest I should be exalted above measure for this, uh, for this thing, I besought the Lord thrice that it might depart from me. And he said unto me, My grace is sufficient for thee. I love that. My grace is is sufficient for thee. You know, God's mercy and truth comes with God's grace. 
My grace. For my strength is made perfect in weakness. Most gladly, therefore, will I infirm in my... Uh, I would rather, glo will rather glory in my infirmities that the power of Christ may rest upon me. Therefore, I take pleasure in my infirmities and in reproaches and necessities and persecutions and in distresses for Christ's sake. For when I am weak, then I am strong. Folks, when we are weak and we trust in God then we'll be strong. End of story. We say, God, I can't do it. I can do all things through Christ which strengtheneth me. You can do it through Christ. Oh, Lord, I just can't go on. You ever felt that way? And then you say, okay, God, I need your help. This afternoon, I had a massive headache. My, my, left, my right eye is still twitching. And I said, Lord, man, I got a headache. And man, it's just, it, it's killing me. And, 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 Lord, I don't know if I can preach tonight. I know I can't preach into my own power tonight, but can I have like a five-minute nap? I should have asked for an hour nap. Five minutes later, my cat's like at the door. My cat knocks with her head, okay? She's retarded. I think, she, I think, I think she's retarded, okay? And, and, and if she doesn't answer, she, we don't answer. She'll walk back halfway down the hallway and she'll start running and then leap the door. Poof. You know, and, and she's retarded. And did I tell you she's retarded? She's retarded. And I said, God, I said, I, I just need five minutes. And I literally got probably five minutes. And I feel like a million bucks. I could have taken all the medication I wanted, but I said, you know, God, I'm going to go to you, the great physician. And God took care of me. Now, my eye's still twitching a little bit, but that's okay. I can still see. See, at one time in his life, even King Saul leaned on Jesus and, and found failure when he stopped leaning on God. And when we stop leaning on God, we will fail. 1 Samuel chapter 15, verse 17, and, says, and, and Samuel said, When thou wast little in thine own sight, wast thou, made, it was thou, not, thou not made the head of the tribes of Israel, and the Lord anointed thee king over all of Israel. We got to think of, you know what? God is stronger than us, so I'm just going to lean on him. Leaning, leaning, leaning on the everlasting arms, safe and secure from all alarms. Are you leaning on Jesus or are you leaning on something else? The center two verses in the Bible. I love this. Yeah, I'll know what the center two. How many people know what the center two verses in the Bible are? It's found in Psalm chapter 118, verses 8 and 9. It says, it is better to trust in the Lord than to put confidence in man. It is better to trust in the Lord to put, than to put confidence in princes. Just trust in the Lord. If you're trusting in me, you're in trouble. You are. You're a fool. And what does a fool mean? Stupid. Oh, pastor, I'm trusting in you. <laughs> no, you better not. You know why? I'm a sinner. I haven't arrived yet. I won't arrive until Jesus calls me home and then I'll arrive to heaven. But if you trust in the Lord, he'll get you somewhere. It'll get you right with God. The center two verses are the central theme in the Bible. Trusting in the Lord. Proverbs 3, verse 5 and 6, trust in the Lord with all thine heart. <laughs> I being in the way. The Lord led me. That's trusting the Lord. You better trust in the Lord. Number three, to rely on the Lord implies a compliance to him. The word compliance means a yielding. The armies of Judah had yielded all that they were to the power of God. Perhaps another good word for compliance is, to, is a surrender. Before they could win, they had to surrender. Before they could surrender, they had to know that what they needed, and they needed God, so they surrendered it to him. Jeroboam's army was huge. Do you know it insisted on about 800,000 mighty men of valor? Those were the they were like the U.S. Marines, Special Forces Navy SEALs, the Canadian Black Watch. 
that a half a million men died. 400,000 left. No, 300,000 left. And, by the way, the other army had only about 400,000, half the people. When it was all said and done, they killed more than what they got, what they were, or the, more than the number that they had. When a Christian fights against God, he's not surrendered nor compliant to his will. Oh, but I don't want to do this. Huh? Whose will is it? Whose will is it? I, I, I was saying this morning uh, in, our, in our Sunday in our I think it was in our Sunday school. I might have said it in the morning service. I don't remember. Uh, Freddie texted me yesterday when he was down in 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 uh, uh, at Sam's Club in the United States. And I love peanut butter. How many people like peanut butter? I I mean I, I bathe in it. Okay, I'm serious. I love peanut butter. And it was Jif's super chunky peanut butter. You've had that? Have you ever, have you, have you ever had that? Oh. And it was Jeff's super chunky peanut butter. Three pound jars, there was two of them. And I'm thinking, is it my will or is it God's will? They were 10 bucks US, 15 bucks Canadian. I'm thinking, well, I prayed about it. It wasn't the will of God. I, lo and behold, I did not know that we had four jars of peanut butter underneath my daughter, <laughs> underneath my daughter's bed. <laughs> it's okay. It's okay. I go through a jar, probably a jar and a half a month, maybe a jar a month. Love it. Number one, to rely, yeah, maybe I need to go to addiction counseling for that. Number one, to rely on, a, uh, on the Lord implies a closeness. Number two, it implies a weakness. Number three, it implies a compliance. And number four, this is my favorite point, it assures a victory. It assures a victory. I don't know about you, but I want to be on the winning side. I'm a competitive freak. I could play crazy eights with somebody, man, I want to beat them. I, I, I'm, I, I'm, my friend Andreas is coming up, man, we're going to play uh, on the PlayStation, we're going to play a, a, a Canadian, uh, we're going to play an army, uh, an army thing, and, and, and I, I want to beat them. He's an ex-U.S. Marine. I'm ex-Canadian. I'm military man. I want to beat him. If I don't beat him, he's walking to Chicago. I'm serious, man. I am that competitive. I, I, I don't like to lose. And I certainly don't like to lose to that old smutty face of the devil. I hate losing to him. I can't wait to see him cast into hell. I hope God says, hey, who else wants to kick him into hell? <laughs> Hello? <laughs> I think I'd be fighting some of you to get up there. I hope I'm fighting everyone of to get up there. Abja and the armies of Judah won the battle against Jeroboam and the children of Israel because they relied on God. Trust in the Lord with all thine heart and lean not unto thine own understanding and all thy ways acknowledge him and he shall direct thy path. Proverbs 3, verse 5 and 6 is one of my favorite verses in the Bible. It's actually, it's actually the verse on my, on my uh, 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 classic note Bible. It will assure, if we trust in the Lord, it will assure a victory. How many people like to be a loser? Well, bless God, I'm a loser. You know, the, 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 the World Series, uh, the uh, Chicago, uh, Cleveland Indians did not go, Woo! We're the first losers! And they were upset that they lost the World Series. Chicago Cubs fans were like, yeah, we're number one, yeah! Finally, after all these years. And I think in Game 7, if the Leafs ever make Game 7, and they're up with a minute to go, in Game 7 of the Stanley Cup Finals, Jesus will come back. <laughs> Done. Those Leaf fans, though, one second left, and he's like, ha! Sorry. It was, he'll do it. Lord, can I? <laughs> but nobody likes to be a, the first loser. I'm number two. I remember, I think it was last Sunday, my dad and I, we were driving back, and 
Well, bless the Lord, we... I asked for forgiveness on this one. We were driving back to my house, and we are kind of, well, racing each other. Street racing. Yeah. And there was a police officer <laughs> in an unmarked vehicle. And something just told me to slow down. It was also my dad coming into my lane told me to back off there too. I did not like to lose. I wanted, I mean, I ran down the hallway because he beat me to my house, to my, the building. I wanted to beat him to my apartment. I wanted to beat the old guy <laughs> walking with Paul. I wanted to beat him, man. But you know what? I don't want to lose to the devil. And when we sin, we lose to the devil in that little battle. When you, 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 you go back to your addiction, you lose that little battle. See, if you rely on yourself, ooh, turn your Bibles to Proverbs 28, and I'm almost done. I will almost be done very shortly. This is a very sad verse. Proverbs 28, 26. It says, He that trusteth his own heart is a fool. What does the word fool mean? Stupid. stupid. So if you trust in your own heart, you're stupid. But whoso walketh wisely shall be delivered. We only walk with wisely when we walk with God. We are admonished in Proverbs 23, 4, to cease from our own wisdom. See, relying on the Lord assures us victory because God never loses. Um, I know you, you, how many people have ever read a book and you're getting all frustrated with the, the book and then you skip to the last chapter to see how it ends? You ever done that, Marcella? A long time ago? I've skipped to the end of the, uh, end of the Bible. Guess what? We win. I'm on the winning side. And so are you if you decide that you're going to stand up for God. Oh, well, you know, you better stand up for Jesus. I, 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 hello? You better stand up for Jesus. Amen. Because if you stand up for any, with anything less, you're going to fail. Many of us are in a battle. Some are battles of addiction, some are battles with work, some are battles with your Bible reading, some are battles with your friend. But I'll tell you something, whom are you going to rely on will determine if you're going to win the battle or not. Are you going to be like that half a million soldiers who just died on a bloody battlefield? Are you going to be in some of these empty seats? Oh, well, so-and-so used to be here but they're not here anymore. Well, well, so-and-so over here used to be here, but they're not in here anymore. Or are you going to be one of these ones that are going to say, you know what, until Jesus calls me out of here, Jesus calls me out of here, or home, one of the two, you're stuck with me, preacher. And one of the things I, I, I love about Sarah, Sarah is my friend. She's been with me. How long have you been with us, Sarah? The staff were six years, haven't you? It's almost seven. Well, yeah, we just had her sixth year this year, or seventh year this year, one of the two. But she's been here eight years, and she says, Preacher, you ain't getting rid of me. You're stuck with me. Now, when Abigail moves away, who knows? Sarah, Sarah might be her, her silent roommate in the corner at Bible college. Before I close, I want to give you two more verses right back in the center of the Bible. Psalm 118, verse 8 and 9. It is better to trust in the Lord than to put confidence in men. It is better to trust in the Lord than to put confidence in princes. What does this mean? It simply means that the battle is the Lord's if you will trust him with what's going on. Oh, but it's so hard. The battle's hard if you don't trust in him. It is. The battle's actually impossible if you don't trust in him. I don't care so much how hard the battle is. I care so much as who you're trusting in. Now, I do care how, what the battle you're going through. 
But it'll be a whole pile easier if you just trust in the Lord. Trust in the Lord with all thine heart. Well, you know, you have to trust in God to get saved. 100% trust in God to get saved. You don't have to know the whole Bible. You just need to trust in the Lord to get saved. Do you know how many people know how many words? Do you know how many words are in the Bible without looking in the front of your Bible? Oh, well, you must not be saved because you don't know how many words are in the Bible. Oh, well, that's right. It's uh, the Bible says you are. You don't need to know everything about God. Sarah, don't look at the front of the Bible. Sarah's cheating. She's looking at the front of her Bible. Yeah. He, he didn't ask me, Pastor. How many, how many books are in the Bible? 66. How many questions are in the Bible? I don't know. There's a lot. Simple one question. One question tonight, and, and then I'm done. Who are you relying on? Who are you relying on? You know, tomorrow you could go to your job, and your job says, you're fired. See you. Bye. Have a nice day. That's happened to me. I got laid off. Walked in. Boss says, uh, we need to talk to you. Business is slow. You're getting laid off. I had a good paying job. Great benefits. Great benefits. Got laid off. Okay. But you know what I did? On my way back from Paris, I started praying. I said, Lord, I have no job. I got mouths to feed, big mouths to feed. I need a job. By the time I got home, I got a phone call from somebody that I had applied to several years earlier. You still looking for work? I am now. Got laid off. When can you start? Be there in 10 minutes. They said, really? I said, come on in and do the paperwork. You start, you start Monday morning. I'm like, okay. I went and did the paperwork. They were like, really impressed. The guy was a Christian. He says, how'd you know? What happened? I said, because I just prayed. I trusted in the Lord. You trust in God. He'll see you through. If you're not trusting in the Lord... What's my favorite saying for are you? How's that working for you? Oh, well. That better be a saying you better memorize. Because if you don't trust in the Lord, it ain't going to work. 